Hi everybody, I'm Jay from Acolyte Instruments and I want to thank you for purchasing your Euphonic Array 1D. And I wanted to make this little video to guide you in a quick setup. Uh, so first let's go over everything that's in the box. Uh, you have your nine UFO notes. Uh, They're all labeled at their base. Uh, D, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A. Uh, your nine playing rods, stainless steel. You have one stand with eight docks and an empty dock for your bass note, as well as your assembly kit. So, what is the first thing we're going to do? Uh, it's going to be take your additional bolt, which is included in the assembly kit, and you are going to apply it to the empty port in your stand right here. That's the first thing we're going to do. So, that's there, and we are going to fix the bass note to the stand. Uh, it's good to have some space when you're doing this because uh, you do uh, need a little bit of room. Go ahead and grab your Allen key and stick that into the bolt. Grab your base note and attach it to the port. This is obviously a little wobbly. Getting set up is always a little awkward, but once you're set up, you should have no problems from there. And again, uh, these instruments are most likely being assembled for the first time, so there's gonna be a little give to them. Uh, you just don't want to break the threads. I, I'm not pushing anything super hard. I'm just kind of feeling it as I go. Okay, I have a nice stable bass note now. There we go. It may not be straight. You don't really need to worry about it being perfectly straight just yet. We will get straightness later. Uh, but you wanna kinda get as close as you can be. And I'm taking a look and it's looking pretty good. Um, all right, that's pretty much the most complicated part of this setup. The rest is going to be mounting the rest of our notes, starting with A3, progressively up, pushing them against the base right there, boom. And the B flat. Now these are, they're very snug. You want them to be very snug. Uh, it's what's going to give really nice sound to your instrument overall. So don't worry that it feels a little hard to push them down your first time around. Also, while you're setting this up, if you notice that your um, docking station feels wiggly, if it's moving around, don't worry, that is easily fixable and we are going to adjust it after setup. Okay. Nearly there. And the final A. Okay. At this point in setup, I like to take a look and see how straight everything is before I put my rods on. Um, so I'm going to take a look here. I'm seeing pretty straight lines all around. So I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna just apply my rods now. Uh, and now your rods, you want to, and I stress this again, while we do include a mini wrench for fine tightening, 99% of the time you are going to want to hand tighten your rods. Um, if you over tighten your rods, you will strip the threading uh, and that will break it and it will need to be replaced. Uh, Good thing is, replacement rods are pretty inexpensive and uh, we do sell them. Uh, so not to worry if you do strip or break a rod, they are replaceable. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my rods and I'm just, again, hand tightening them into each thread for each note. And again, I'm just getting them in there right now. I'm not pushing super hard or uh, tightening crazy hard on the thread. And also when I do tighten, I wanna grab it from the bearing at the top of the, of the actual rod. Now you could do this before you assemble your stand, uh, but I just kinda like to do it afterwards personally. Um, but you see from this video, uh, which is gonna be a, not too long of a video, setup is pretty quick and easy. And the truth is, once you get your instrument assembled, I find that it's very easy to just pick this thing up and put it in my passenger seat in my car if I'm traveling a lot. You could even uh, put the seatbelt over it. It's not really going anywhere. And the other nice thing about this instrument, 
because it's very durable. You know, if this thing falls over, you may get some scratches on it for sure. You might mess with the, uh, with the finish a little bit, but the chances are it's probably gonna sound the exact same. Um, I think it's truly difficult to damage these with exception to possibly breaking your rods from over tightening. And I'm just realizing I'm missing a rod, but luckily I have an extra one right over there because we make instruments over here. Okay, here we go. Our final rod going into our base U-foam. And you can see this is shaking around a little bit right now. Again, not to worry. We're going to fix that. Everything is going to be nice and tight once fully assembled. Okay, so now technically we're at a point where we can play. So go ahead and grab some distilled water and give a listen to your instrument. two problems. This is, now we're going to need to make our adjustments. Uh, so some of the notes you can hear are sounding, uh, they're sounding pretty good, and some of them aren't sounding and you're hearing a rattle in certain places. What does that mean? Well, that means we're going to need to align our resonation chambers. As you can see, this one on the very end, its rod is hitting into this reso chamber, which just means that it needs to be adjusted. So I'm going to move the resonation chamber slightly to the left which is making it straighter. And also while I'm doing this, I'm trying to just looking at the rods and seeing if they are all straight. And the chances are if your rods are straight, your resonation chambers are straight, and that means that nothing's gonna hit into anything. Uh, so once that is straight, you're gonna tip your instrument over. You'll notice every single note has a bolt for it, just like the one that you use to affix the bass note to the stand. Uh, and this is what's tightening that docking station to the platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that docking station for this instrument to the point where it just barely moves anymore. So I do wanna give it some good turns. And now just with my hand, I'm gonna attempt to wiggle this around. It's not going anywhere. That is solid tight right there. Uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing with just about all of them right now, just to make sure that nobody's running into each other. I can see this one in the back is slightly running into this uh, U-phone right here. So again, I'm slightly adjusting it. I'm gonna go underneath, stick the Allen key into the bolt, and tighten that bad boy up right there. Make it nice and tight. Yeah, that one had a little bit more ways to go. Boom, that is nice and tight. That's not running into anything. And I'm gonna do the same with the next couple. I'm just doing fine tunes. The truth is, hey, if you're not as obsessive as me, you may not need to do this part. <laughs> if your instrument plays and it sounds good, you're good to go. But if you're crazy like me, uh, you want everything straight looking and, you know, perfect OCD type personality, that's, that's me. Uh, but it is possible to get it done. It's just a matter of taking a little bit of time to get it right. Like this one is knocking into this one right now and it's too tight. So I actually have to loosen it a little bit so that I can adjust it. So I've loosened it up a little bit. I'm now just turning it slightly to get it a little straighter and tightening it again to the station. Let's have a look. That works for me. And now I'm just going to adjust my bass note because it is running into that one a little bit. Again, I'm just moving it with this hand right now and I'm going to go back again to the bass note bolt, tighten that nice and tight. That one you want to get real good and tight. It's going to be hard to strip that one. Uh, and boom, we are looking good. Now, uh, there is one other thing that we may need to adjust. At this point, we should be sounding beautiful, but again, troubleshooting, there's always things that you may need to fix, so let's give her a listen.
fantastic. Okay, so it's sounding quite, quite good. There are a few things that I could still nitpick and move around. Again, you are going to adjust this instrument to your liking. This is about what you like. Again, this is the standard setup. You are welcome to set up your euphonic however you would like in whatever order, whether you're left or right-handed or you just want to make some crazy layout, go for it. The possibilities are endless. This is just a good standard setup and uh, the easy kind of way to get started. Now, uh, if you are at this point and you are hearing rattling, but nothing is running into each other and nothing seems to be hitting into each other, the problem is most likely your rods are not tight enough to your tone field. And that's where this wrench will come in. If you hear any rattling, and I'll just give you an example, I'll just loosen up this, this rod to give you an example of what that's gonna say. You hear that? There's, uh, the, the note is very truncated and there's this really horrible rattle. Well, go ahead, if you hear that, just hand tighten again. And if you're good, you're good. If that rattle is still there, but it's less, that's time to take the mini wrench and I am very barely applying pressure here. This requires almost no pressure. I'm just barely touching it to give it a little more snugness and that will give you perfect That will let it sit perfectly flush and give you a nice tone. Uh, if you have any questions, any troubleshooting, any worries, feel free to shoot us an email at info at Acolyte INST. You can visit our website, Acolyte Instruments, for more information. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at Acolyte underscore Euphonics and at Nirvana Handpan uh, for more tips and tricks with the Euphonic and Hip Bands. Till next time, I'm Terrence J. Thanks.